Okay, Flojo today. First, we're going to start by importing our files. We'll import our single stain controls and also our non stain control. Next, I'll import our samples of interest. Okay, now I want to go check sample quality tools, check sample quality, and it should be blue or green. Red or yellow symbolizes that the sample may not be so good. Next, we're going to set our lymphocyte gate. We'll customize the x axis. and minimize it by using the minus button. Click apply. And I'll also do the same for the Y axis. Again with the minus button. Just change it a little more. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to create the gate for our sites. Usually I expect to see something around 3 million for the Ford Scatter. Let's set this as lymph sites. Next, I want to double click on our gate to create a single cell gate. The x axis will be forward scatter A area, and y axis will be forward scatter H height. Should see something like this. Create a new gate, let's encapsulate the majority of the population. This would be our single cells. Here we're going to apply our lymphocyte gate by dragging it into the conversation set. Next, we're going to perform compensation. This is particularly important when we have multiple colors. As you can see, some of the samples have already been read by the computer, depending on the name of the file. I'm going to double click on this here, C3APC. change it to the APC signal here as seen by FL4A and we see that only the positive is being automatically set by the computer so we need to set the negative as well so here is our non-sustained control and we can see that the peak ends around 10 to the power of 4 so that will be our cutoff mark for our negative signal. So anything below 10 to the power of 4 will be our APC minus. Anything above will be our APC positive. So I'm going to set this as FL for A minus. Now we need to repeat this with our CD45RAPE. Double click on the loop site. Select PE. Change the histogram. You see that the computer has already done a good job in automatically detecting the two peaks. But I'd like to shift it a bit more. We'll match this to PE. Again, this is 10 to the power of 4. So I think the computer has detected a little bit slightly less, so we're going to shift it a little bit to the right.
next we're going to check our GFP positive signal change our negative non-stand control to FITCA double click on them sites change the histogram you see the majority of our sample is uh, FITC GFP positive so again use our negative non-stand control we can see that the max is around 10 to the power 4 and we'll also set this to 10 to the power 4 and rename this as FL1A minus okay so next yes we'll go back to our compensation and see that Ah, first we'll set our negative for our GFP FITC signal. As you can see, we don't have a per CP sample. So I'm going to right click and remove this parameter the negative hasn't been set yet for APC so I'm going to select FR4 A- minus. so now our parameters are all in yellow and now we can apply the subgroup and to all samples we click view matrix you can see the matrix for our compensation just going to minimize all our compensation samples so we want to use and look at our experiment experimental samples so we can create a new group rename it experiment From our all samples, I'm going to select our samples of interest and drag it to experiment. You can see that our samples have been compensated as there is a pink uh, square, 3x3 three three square, next to our samples. I'm going to take the lymphocyte gate and drag it to experiment so that all of our samples in the experiment group have the lymphocyte gate. And I'm also going to select the single cell gate and drag it into the lymphocytes so that we can look at single cells in our lymphocyte group. And double click on single cells for our first sample. And we want to look at GFP positive cells in this particular case. So you can see from our conversation, we've selected the point 10 to power 4 as our cutoff. So I'm going to do the same here. So 98.9% .9 of our cells are positive for GFP. I'm going to double click on this to open our GFP positive cells. We're going to select APC A for our CD3 positive cells and PE for our CD45 RA positive cells. So again, we can come back to our compensation window and look at our cutoffs. And for both, they are 10 to the power of 4. This may be different depending on the sample that you have. Okay. And I'll set the quadrants like this. Yeah, both 10 to the power 4. So I'm going to select GFP positive cells 
and these four quadrants and drag them and put them into our single cell gate so that all of our samples of interest have the same criteria. If we click right, we can scroll through each of our samples. Next, I want to save a PDF file. I right click, click Copy to Layout Editor. If I right click, I'm able to click on backgating, and this shows where our sample has come from. First, we have a lymph site gate, a single cell gate, and then GFP positive cells. I'm going to create a batch report so that all of our uh, six samples of interest have the same uh, layout. Yeah, we need to change the page size so that everything fits in. So under File, click Scale to Page. I'm going to save and you can choose a variety of different file formats, but I will choose PDF. Save into this folder. If you have any questions, please let me know. And that will be all. Thanks.